ओम विश्व दर्पण दृश्यमान नगरी तुल्य निजागत पश्यन्नात्मनि मयया बहिरीवोद्भूत यथा निद्रया यक्षात्कुते प्रबोध समय स्वात्मा तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमहद श्रीदक्षिणाूर्त बीजस्यांतरिमाकुरो जगदीद प्राकन माया कलकलना वैचिचित्रीकृत मयावीव विजृंभय महायोगी वयस्वेच्छया तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमहद श्रीदक्षिणाूर्त तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमहद श्रीदक्षिणाूर्त ओ सहनावत सहनो भुन सह वीरकवाह तेजस्वीनामस्तुमा विदिषा वह ओ शाति 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 सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा वर्स टू वन टू स ये क्षते किंचित तेनागत भवे दृष्ट पुण्यम पापम च श्रुतिषुडिंडिम सो विद्यारण्य इज टॉकिंग अबाउट ए मैथड ऑफ एंक्वायरी यूज इन उपनिषद इन जनरल एंड ही पॉइंट्स आउट द टेम ऑफ उपनिषद इज फर्स्ट टू टर्न अटेन्शन ऑफ ए सीकर फ्रॉम भोग्य प्रपंच टू भोक्ता सो इट टॉक्स अबाउट ए सेल्फ इंक्वायरी लिविंग अ साइड भोग्य प्रपंच सो नाउ इट अटेन्शन इज ऑन भोक्ता एंड दस भोक्ता इज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाय उपनिषद इन 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 ए कंपोजिट एंटिटी आत्मा बींग ब्रह्मन देन हाउ कैन यू से सेल्फ इज भोक्ता मीन्स भोक्ता इज अ मिक्सर सो टू कंपोनेंट्स आर धे सो एनीबडी सेज आई वेल ज्ञानी और अज्ञानी एनी बड़ी डेफिनेटली इट इज अ मिक्सर आई ऑफ ज्ञानी आई ऑफ अज्ञानी इट्स ऑलवेज अ मिक्सर मिक्सर ऑफ ए साक्षी एंड अहंकार चित चिदा भाषा एंड दे आर इनसेपरेबल मिक्सर इट्स अ इनसेपरेबल मिक्सर सो देर इज नो देर इज सो बिकॉज प्योर साक्षी विल नॉट हैव ए आई कैन नेवर से आई टू से आई यू रिक्वायर माइंड The sakshi is free from even mind. Therefore, sakshi is sakshi. It is a limitless consciousness. It, there is nothing other than limitless consciousness, and therefore there is no mind itself. Therefore, sakshi cannot say I. And uh, well, pure chidavasa also cannot say I. I am. There is no such thing as called pure chidavasa. Reflection of sun. Pure reflection of sun. <laughs> yeah, sun is already there. Without sun, where is reflection? And therefore, existence of a chidabasa definitely requires a chaitanya. So, like there is no pure ro- rope snake, you know, without the support of the rope. So, bhokta is always a mixture. Of this too, chidabasa alone is bhokta. <clears throat> When you say I, and shastra says bhokta. नवारे पत्यु कामाय पति प्रियो भवति आत्मनस्तु कामाय सर्व प्रियो भवति पति प्रियो भवति आत्मनस्तु कामाय आत्मनस्तु भोगाय सो दैट्स हाउ भोक्ता इज इंट्रोड्यूस बट भोक्ता इज नॉट अ प्योर एंटिटी एस सच सो वेन पर्सन इज सेज आई फॉर माय सेक आई एंजॉय एवरीथिंग दैट आई विच इज भोक्ता इज अ मिक्सर एंड दैट आई ही सेज आई इट सेल्फ प्रूव दैट इट इज नॉट प्योर साक्षी प्योर साक्षी कैन नेवर से आई and uh, well then uh, chidabhasa chidabhasa also cannot say i because the very existence of chidabhasa is possible because of the chit and therefore definitely this bhokta i is a mixture 
and of these two, uh, what is really bhokta? Then that Chidabhasa alone is a bhokta. Sakshi is basically a bhokta. So bhokta is a mixture of uh, bhokta Chidabhasa and a bhokta Sakshi, <coughs> which is definitely there. Chidabhasa is there. Well, then be definitely a support of Chit also is there. Sakshi is there. And this Chit is not known by the spiritual seeker. So Upanishad the well, and does not mention initially that it is a mixture etc. It, but it talks about a self-inquiry as a bhokta inquiry. It begins with that. And once student has come to the self-inquiry, Upanishad educates student that bhokta inquiry is nothing but a mixture inquiry. And that is, uh, so this inquiry is done by a particular method. You can hear it is this um, in Bradanika, it is a method of avasthatre viveka. What we are talking right now in this particular verse, that is a Bradanika Upanishad vakyam based on that, but it is avasthatre viveka. And through that avasthatre viveka, bhokta is refuted and abhokta sakshi atma, which is left, that is the my real nature. So Vidyarina wants to connect to this. Uh, uh, this, this particular section of Bhridharanika Upanishad to Bhridharanika Upanishad original 4, 4, 12, which in fact the whole chapter, 7th chapter is based on that. So, Atmanam Chet Vijaniya Tayamasmiti Purushaha Kimichan Kasya Kamaya Sharirmanu Sanjvaret That's 4, 4, 12 is under this discussion. To explain that uh, 4, 4, 12 and uh, in that also the particular portion called Kasya Kamaya Vidyaranya takes an example of Bhridhanaka Upanishad again. And that is right now, uh, that is uh, Swayam Jyotir Brahmana. 4, 3, 15 to 17 has been quoted here in this 2, 1, 2 as an example. So we should uh, know this, that what is under discussion is Swayam Jyotir Brahmana, but that's an example to prove the mantra, total explanation of the mantra of uh, Bhridhanaka, 4, 4, 12, that is Sharirika Brahmana. And so, Sharirika Brahmana is under a discussion, total discussion, in the chapter 7 of Panchadashi. In that, Swayam Jyotir Brahmana, this particular mantra, 15 to 17, which talks about Avasthatraya Viveka, in order to make a person understand that Atma is really Abhokta, Sakshi. This is how we have to understand. So, because Bhridhanika Upanishads are very voluminous, and unless we have in mind a topography of this Bhridhanika Upanishad, it looks like a forest. So we are studying this. And before that also example has come of a Maitre Brahmana. Navare Patyukamaya Patipriyo Bhavati Atmanastukamaya Samaji. That is also Bhridhanak. Yeah. That is a Maitre Brahmana. That is 2-4. And uh, right now we are discussing Swayam Jyotir Brahmana 4-3. Both are examples to prove Kasya Kamaya of Shari Raka Brahmana. So Kasya Kamaya means we are basically to prove that Atma is a Bhokta. For that, these two are examples, Maitri Brahmanam and uh, Swayam Jyotir Brahmanam. Maitri Brahmanam 2-4, second chapter, fourth Brahmana. Swayam Jyotir Brahmana is fourth chapter, third Brahmana. And Mantra 15 to 17. So in this uh, Brahmanam, now in each avastha, well, I experience pleasure and pain, etc. And experience need not become a, uh, need not be owning up the experience. When I experience a sorrow, that's a fact. But when you say I am sorrowful, that's a owning up the sorrow. So drashtva eva says here, drashtva eva punyam cha papam cha. Drashtva eva means well I experience in pain. That's a description of a right now a sapnavastha. So avasthatra viveka as I told you, but right now it's a discussion on sapnavastha. So drashtva eva means I experience pain in dream but I only experience, but don't own up as my attribute, what I experience. So ownership is basically ignorance. I am experiencing, uh, well, dream sorrow, that's fine, papam. And punyam means but definitely sukham. So uh, definitely I experience a, uh, a dream, a sorrow. I experience even a certain pleasure also in, uh, in a dream, but I don't own up. It's an example. I don't own up because when I wake up, well, I drop dream sorrow and dream pleasure both. 
and I say I am free from the sorrow. The waker says I am free from the sorrow. I am free from the pleasure of the dream. Easily drops, even though he has experience, but he doesn't own up. Only thing is condition is he has to wake up. That's the only condition. One has to wake up in order to say that I experience, but yet I don't. I say I don't say I am oh, I am sorrowful or I am a, I am a happy based on dream experience. <clears throat> Same way in every state, well, every experience is basically perceived, but not possessed. Punyam cha papam cha drishtva, sukha dukham drishtva eva, only perceiving. Eva indicates perceiving. Sukham dukham drishtva, sukham dukham anubhuya. Having experienced sukha or dukha in a dream, eva means I experience only, but I don't own up. That is indicated by eva, only. Tena ananva gato bhavet. Well, therefore, I don't take them unto myself as possession that I, I, I am sorrowful. I am happy. No. So when I come to waking, well, definitely I drop them. That's in 13th chapter also Bhagavan said guna, nirgunam guna bhoktru cha. Atma well is guna bhoktru. Experience. Atma is an experiencer of everything. But, well, definitely at the same time, nirguna is free from guna. It doesn't possess any guna. It, he experiences, Atma experiences all gunas, but does not uh, uh, own up the guna and says, I am saguna, etc. Well, I am nirguna only. So, Atma is perceiver, but it is free from the perceived attributes. Iti, eva shruti should indi maha. Well, in this manner, shruti proclaims that Sakshi is basically bhokta. Right? Sakshi is Abhokta, right? You experience everything in any state, but you de definitely don't own up anything. A very beautiful example is a example of a dream where you easily, when you just wake up, you say you experienced all dream objects, either as objects of sorrow, objects of pleasure, but when you wake up, you say you experience that, but you say, I am not sorrowful, I am not uh, happy. You easily drop them. Therefore, experiencing in various states is there. And uh, he is going to discriminate how Chidavasa and Chit, very based on this, very wonderful thing. Based on this, he is, he is going to say, what is, uh, who is a Chidavasa, who is Bhokta and who is not Bhokta, who is a Sakshi and who is uh, a just a Chidavasa. Okay. So, iti Shruti Shu Dindi Maha. Dindi Maha means a proclamation. Proclamation in the Shruti, the Sakshi is above. Verse 2 and 3. Jagrat Sapna Shushuptyadi Parpancham Yat Prakashate Tad Brahma Hamitignyatva Sarva Bandaif Pramuchate. So, another quotation of a Kaivalya. And this is a, a, a whole mantra has been, I mean, quoted here. Bodily lifted by Vidyaranya from Kaivalya Upanishad. Now the only thing is there are two different books in that uh, uh, well this appears uh, this particular mantra appears in the first chapter 18th mantra in one book. In a second book uh, it appears as the first chapter but 28th first chapter 17th mantra I'm sorry but in other book it appears as the first chapter 28th mantra. What book I have in that first chapter has only 19 mantra. And so in this mantra is a 17th one. So this is just by the way. That's how they have written. If you have a book, Panchadashi book, it is written Kavalya Upanishad 117 or 20. How can it be like that? It should be either 117 uh, or it should be 120. But because two different books are there anyways. In uh, one book, there are few additional mantras. Anyway, now it says here, uh, the essence of this, uh, let me tell you, the, the essence of this mantra is that I am basically perceiver, experience or of pleasure and pain. Chidabhasa is a possessor of pleasure and pain. That's the difference. I, the Sakshi, is well basically perceiver. You take this perceiver, I'm going to replace that word. Basically, I, I illumine them. That's what he is going to say, yat prakashate. Anyway, but for a time being, please keep it. So I am basically a perceiver of a, of a pleasure and pain. Chidabhasa is a possessor of a pleasure and pain. That's a big difference between the two. 
सो प्रपंचम जागृत स्वप्न सुषुप्त्यादि प्रपंचम प्रपंचम मीन्स दिस थ्री यूनिवर्स राइट विच इज थ्री फोल्ड जागृत प्रपंच वैल इन जागृत अवस्था सूक्ष्म प्रपंच इन स्वप्नावस्था एंड वैल इन ब्लैंकनेस इन डीप स्टीप स्टेट बिकॉज अवस्था त्रय प्रक्रिया आई टोल्ड यू हियर इट हेज बीन एम्प्लॉयड सो ब्लैंकनेस ऑफ ए डीप स्लीप स्टेट विच वी कॉल टेक्निकली वी कॉल कारण प्रपंच ऑफ ए डीप स्टेट वाल सो जागृत स्वप्न सुषुप्त्यादि प्रपंचम द प्रपंच एंड इंक्लूड्स डेफिनेटली प्लेजर एंड पेन सटन ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ प्लेजर एंड पेन यत प्रकाशते यत प्रकाशते शुड बी टेकन एज ए प्रकाश यति यत प्रकाश यति इल्यूमिन्स इल्यूमिन्स इन ऑल द थ्री स्टेट्स वेरियस ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंसेस सो बेसिकली हियर इट इल्यूमिन्स सो एंड हियर इट सेज जागृत स्वप्न सुषुप्त्यादि now then then definitely adi padat you need a as adi means etc so more than three states are also there so we'll have to go to mandukya now but anyway i'll just mention nanta pragnam na bahish pragnam that seventh mantra you know if you remember there is na, na so there it said nanta pragnam na bahish pragnam na ubayata pragnam na pragnana ganam na pragnam na pragnam etc etc so na anta pragna means the consciousness which is you know um, uh, uh, i mean it's a description of anta pragna one who is conscious of the inner world that is a sapna avastha taijasa so na anta pragna is a negation of atma is not a taijasa na anta pragna na bahish pragna definitely is a description of the waker you can understand that well so and na ubayata pragna that is where the thing is so the ubayata pragna means well sometime one that is conscious of both one who is conscious of the external world waker vishwa one who is conscious of the inner world only that is taijasa indicating sapnavastha and uh, one who is conscious of uh, basically this waking and dream so it's a intermediate state of a mind somebody asked me here recently also one question in english they use a word uh, which begins with f i don't remember so but they 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 say that these are the certain intermediate states you know and uh, like a daydreaming well daydreaming has an element of waking as well as dream so like they they say um, in in a deep sleep state there is sometime a, a person is not fully awake and at the same time person is not fully in a deep sleep state that this all is ubhayata pragna ubhayata pragna well which is well both conscious of both yeah, of course now by the pragnamens which is not even a intermediate state so uh, when there is awareness of both the states either you say dream and um, and deep sleep state or a waking and a deep sleep state etc or else uh, waking and and dream like our day dreaming all this have been included here okay and so this is adi padat we have to take all these things or all we have to take um, a you know experience of samadhi or some extraordinary experiences that you can consider here so anyway jagrat sapna shushuptyaadi so what is left out is all these other intermediate states so that otherwise adi, people used to write adi adi every time like you know they say um, um, so uh, you know uh, sense organs etc that's okay sense organs etc that means you have to include organs of action then sense organs organs of uh, action etc now what we will add okay well, let's add mind now because mind has also has been told as a indriya by bhagavan ekadasham right so therefore i include mind so then this is sense organs organs of action mind etc you what your word somewhere you stop this etc etc i don't know somehow adi adi they keep on adding indriya adi jagra swapna shushupti adi are stop adi means you have to add something then from where will you bring all the time adi so for anyway this is just by the way so anyway so in mandukya that intermediate states are mentioned that we are saying here as a, and that intermediate state has been mentioned under na ubhayat pragna atma is not even this intermediate state atma is not a waker nor another deep sleeper neither a etc etc na pragnana garma indicates uh, na uh, he is not a deep sleeper also this is by the way and na anta pragna indicates 
it is not a taijasa na bahishpragam indicates he is not a waker also vishva also anyway so basically then yat prakashate so jagrat sapna shushuptyadi prapancham yat prakashayati that's it so basically he illumines all the three states various experiences objects of experiences illumines so when you use a word i associated with a jagrat prapancha well that is uh, vishwa chidabasa when you uh, use a word i associated with a sapna avastha then it is taijasa when you use the word i associated with a uh, uh, deep sleep state it is a pragna but when you associate with all the three you are not a chidabasa why because you are you are there in all the three you you when you say when you use with all that when i i i i i wake up i slept i am dreaming or i dreamt i slept and i i now am i'm waking up right now when you use i for all the three states that i cannot be chidabas a i associated with a one state is chidabas i associated with all the three is sakshi hmm. means that i which is there in all the three states illumines all the three states that's what he says jagrat sapna shushuptyadi prapancham yat prakashayati and illumining also is not a is not an action surya prakashate prakashate is not a verb ha ah. surya prakashate or oh, sun sun illumines it doesn't do, do any illumination action just just you are self conscious in presence of a you everything is illumined that is the real sense of a sakshi people think i witness i am a witness i witness my mind when they say i witness my mind definitely they put witness they use the word witness in this sentence as a verb and verb denotes an action so i witness my mind i now witness my mind okay once you come out of the deep sleep state uh, i mean uh, come out of the meditation what will you say no now i don't witness my hey, this also is witnessed understand this this is a very wrong understanding about the meditation of a sakshi bhava you are you are ever witness because you are self conscious and revealing all the time and therefore in your presence everything is revealed that's called sakshi everything is revealed not you reveal something you in your presence which is self revealing you are self conscious and consciousness by nature everything is revealed sun never illumines sun is and in its presence the uh, all these systems i mean whatever prithvi etc all are illumined that is called sakshi and the otherwise this uh, i am right now witness of my mind i am witness of my mind is a useless thing it may be a good step for for preparing your mind that's okay because once you witness your mind you are uh, i mean you are uh, alert to your mind then definitely mind uh, stops moving around and so it will be with you for a time being so that's a good step but witnessing i witness my mind is 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 not a meditation but how are you saying sami ji all this please listen to puja sami ji's meditation he has mentioned this specifically in meditation for a length of time he said that please this is not meditation meditation is understanding yourself as a consciousness in which everything is revealed srotrasya srotram manaso manaha vacho ha vacham pranasya pranah chakshusha chakshu ah in your presence i see in your presence basically i mean the func- everything functions that's what it means but how can it functions by being non separate it can function everything i mean it functions existence and revelation of everything and the function of everything is just because of consciousness and therefore basically not this is witnessing etc is a totally a wrong path of of going can all other people anyway so basic i associated with jagrat prapancha is vishwa same way taijas prapancha as i told you but when you say i wake i wake up i slept i dreamt then that i is common in all the three that is sakshi because simultaneously i cannot be vish, vishwa taijas and pragni because they both all the three are mutually exclusive i associate with one state is 
Chidabhasana. I associate with all the three is Sakshi. Tadaham, that Sakshi I, Brahma Ahamasmi, Brahma Smi, none other than this Brahman, Iti Gnyatva, well by knowing this, Sarva Bandaihi Pramuchyate, I am free from all the Bandhas. All the Bandhas belong to Chidabhasa, not to me, basically. Because Chidabhasa is bound because it is always non-separate from the medium. And so whatever the medium is there in the mind, that is how the Chidabhasa also will appear. So Chidabhasa is all the bond, uh, bondage. So Sarva Bandhaihi Pramuchyate, knowing that I am the witness of all the three states, well definitely the person uh, is released. And the main bondage is Bhoktrutva. Bhoktrutva. So basically I am Sakshi who is a Bhokta. He is going to give a lot of points about how Sakshi is a Bhokta and Chidabhasa is Bhokta. He gives lots of uh, information about it. Let's read 214. Eka eva atma mantam vyaha jagrat sapna sushupti shu sthanatraya vyatitasya punar janmana vidyate. So basically, another quotation for Abhokta Sakshi. So Abhokta Sakshi is a, is a part of this Bhoktrutva Nisheda. So, well, that is our topic right now. Bhoktrutva Nisheda. But, but Abh. When you say I, the Sakshi is Abhokta, well, that is also part of it. For that, well, he is now quoting from Amrita Bindu Upanishad, 11th mantra. Jagrat Sapna Sushuptishu Eka Eva Atma Mantabhya. In all the three states, Atma Eka Eva Bhavati means Atma is only one and same, and that is referred to as a Chit, but not Chidabhasa, because Chidabhasa is not one and the same. In Jagrat Avastha, Chidabhasa is associated with the body. Mind and senses, all. In Sapnavastha, the nature of Chidabhasa varies. It is only associated with the part of the mind. Right? The whole world which is illumined in the dream is none other than the part of the mind called Vasanas. And therefore, Vasanas, of course, inert. But then, whole dream world is basically illumined by this Chidabhasa. And therefore, but that's a different Chidabhasa. Just part of the mind. Whereas in a, wake, um, in a waking state, the Chidabhasa is associated with, that's how we say, by Vishwa. Well, definitely identified with the mind, body, senses, everything. Prana, everything. And therefore, that Chidabhasa, well, definitely is um, different. But Atma Eka Heva Bhavati, this Chit is one alone. So Chidabhasa is a basically exclusive factor, not identical in all the states. So Upanishad talks about one Atma in all the three, and therefore it must be the Sakshi. <coughs> So it's only one. Saha mantavya that Sakshi has to be known as real I. And definitely also Abhokta to be claimed. Ahamasmi as I, this Sakshi is to be known as a I. And so Upanishad says, Sthanatraya Vyatitasya, this Amrita Bindu Upanishad says, Sthanatraya Vyatitasya, I am that Sakshi Atma, who is not contaminated by these three avasthas. So, vyatitasya, v plus ati plus idhatu, you know, and it is kartariktaha here, vyatitasya. So, basically, who, is, who transcends all the three, uh, contam, transcends all the three avasthas, not contaminated by three avasthas. And while what, what will be the advantage knowing I like this? Well, advantage is punar janmana vidyate. Upanishad says, there is no Punarjanma. And definitely Chidabhasa has a Punarjanma. Yeah. It, has, it is associated with the mind. So as it travels from one body to other, well, as you know, the Sukshma Sharira enters, Chidabha also, also, also appears. In between find unmanifest, now manifest, then unmanifest, now unmanifest. So, travels from one body to other. So we say Janma. Jiva is born, we say. Like that. So basically, <coughs> Chidabhasa has a Punajanma, but uh, knowing I from the mixture, right? I is a mixture, I told you. Since I is a mixture, while well, understanding Chidabhasa as a Bhokta and I as a Sakshi, which is there in all the three states, and uh, while well, knowing as a 
अभोक्ता वाल देर इज नो जन्म वेल देन वी आर वरीड अबाउट पुनर्जन्म ऑफ चिदा भाषा वंस यू नो बिकॉज इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ आई एंड वेफ आर वेल बट यू वंस यू नो चिदा भाषा इज अ मिथ्या यू डोंट वरी राइट एंड फॉर दैट ओनली दिस ज्ञानी हैज नो पुनर्जन्म बिकॉज शास्त्रा प्रॉमिस इज इवन फ्रीडम फ्रॉम पुनर्जन्म ऑफ ए चिदा भाषा फॉर ज्ञानी न प्रेत्य अस्ते न प्रे न प्रेत्य संज्ञा अस्ति न प्रेत्य प्रकर्षेण इत्य वंस ही इज गॉन विथ गॉन दैट्स हाउ इट इज बिकॉज द वेरी सटल बॉडी वेर चिदा भाषा एपियर्स दैट डिसइंटीग्रेट्स कारण शरीर हैज ऑलरेडी कारण शरीर हैज ऑलरेडी यू नो वेन ही वॉज ही वॉज इन दिस बॉडी दैट टाइम इट्स सेल्फ कारण शरीर हैज लिटरली बिकम लाइक ए लाइक ए लाइक ए you know that uh, very old clothes even if you touch it is going to break you some of the books you will see if you just turn the page it just breaks like that why because avidya has gone sanchita has gone so his karana sharira is almost gone while he was alive so karana sharira whatever is there vasanas and few things are there karmas etc they merge into the total understand merge into maya and then sukshma sharira merges into subtle elements this body of course in gross elements so medium itself is not there where is a question of a punarjanma of chidabhasa now medium itself has gone so sanya is equal to chidabhasa vedarana vedarana vakya na pretya sanya asti now no chidabhasa left over the very jivatvam is gone and therefore that is a promise of a shastra that's called videh mukti shastra promises this freedom from punarjanma for chidagnani chidabhasa because he has understood chidabhasa as a mithya and uh, other people also should not worry about but definitely they should know if they don't know they will take themselves as a bhokta or a chidabhasa then definitely well they are associated with the karmas etc and for the experiences in the future from sanchita etc they will also acquire a new body so chidabhasa will be born you know jivatvam is there anyway <clears throat> i suppose a gnani worries about chidabhasa's birth etc he is not a gnani so this is a trick of vedanta okay <coughs> so sthanatre vyatitasya you can supply their gnani na who is sthanatre vyatita one who is this gnani is one who is says i am sakshi atma who is not contaminated by three avastas right and therefore um uh, that's a we can say adjective to the gnani sthanatre vyatitas who has trans uh, transgressed from all the three states if he is associated with three states he will say jiva chidabhas ah vishwa he will say right now i am a i am a waker over i am a waker oh fine very good okay so from the mixture you say i have a bhokta or a waker having a waking experiences i am a deep sleeper i am a dreamer if that is that what that's what you are saying then that's not gnanam verse 215 त्रिषुधामसु यद्भोग्यं भोक्ता भोगस्य यद्भवेत् तेभ्यो विलक्षणसाक्षी चिन्मात्रोहं सदा शिवः अगेन अनदर कोटेशन फ्रॉम कैवल्य उपनिषद् 118 और 21 आइदर सो इन वन बुक इट इज 18th मंत्र इन अनदर बुक का इट इज 21st मंत्र एंड हियर वेरी ब्यूटीफुली segregation you will see bhokta chida bhasa and abhokta sakshi uh, clearly segregated in this mantra 118 or 21 trishu dham su in all the three states there are relevant triput triputis bhokta bhogyam and bhoga in all the three states are different in jagrat avastha well bhokta is a vishwa bhogyam is a sthula prapancha and bhoga is a sthula vishaya bhoga in sapnavastha well the bhokta is tejasa and and um, and, uh, and sukshma prapancha or vasana maya is a basically bhoga bhogya i'm sorry and sapna sukha dukha is a bhoga in sushupti avastha bhokta is a pragnya bhogyam is this karana prapancha or agnyana and bhoga is a ananda ananda bhuk so pratibimba ananda is a bhoga actually we should know this it will come in a 11th chapter 
but just I will refer to you. Uh, what happens is, you know, in, in a, see in a waking state, we call it as a Vijnanamaya and Manomaya, both are present. Vijnanamaya is a Pramata, this is just by the way. Vijnanamaya is a Pramata, Manomaya is a Pramana. And both, at the time of a deep sleep, both resolve. Vijnanamaya and Manomaya resolves, right, in deep sleep state, in ignorance. And that is called Anandamaya. And then in 11th chapter of Panchadashi, there is a big discussion because the whole 5 chapters, 11 to 15, is a discussion of how, uh, that Atma Ananda. So in 11th chapter itself, very beautifully, that how can you call the Vijnanamaya who is in the waking state, uh, when it resolves, why would you call it as a Anandamaya? The thing is, when you go to sleep, you go to bed, and just before the sleep arrives, right? Just before the sleep arrives, this uh, the the thought in the mind basically is is totally introvert now. If it is objectifying various things, well, then there, there is no near, sleep is not nearby. But now it has become introvert as though. This very beautiful discussion I can't discuss long, but this is also connected with the waking state also. In any moment of happiness, this is thing, this thing is happening. So the mind becomes introvert. Means there is no objectification. Mind objectifies certain thing, we call it as extrovert. Mind does not objectify anything. Is introvert means it's an, there is an abidance of the mind. Basically, abidance of mind in its itself, and mind being nothing but Brahman, right? By nature. So mind abides into Brahman. And at that time, since still you are waking up, I mean, there is a, you are, you are awake. In that mind, the, there is a reflection of the self. Nothing else. They call it this, this particular vritti, a vritti with abidance. They call it as a, in, in, in our sampradaya, as a shanta vritti. Shanta vritti. Because there is no objectification by any, uh, by the mind of anything. So that mind objectifies as though itself. Its own self. We say abidance of the mind or you say I am with myself. All this we are using. But I means Swamiji Ahankara. That is what the mind is. Then what, what else is there? So the I thought basically, well, objectifies the self now because it is not objective for anything else. So either you say abidance of the mind, either you say you are with yourself or you say mind is introvert. Everything is same. And then in that state, I mean, there is a reflection of the self. And of course, it's a fullness. And therefore, basically, one goes into the deep sleep state with this Sukhavrutti. And therefore, this Vijnanamaya has resolved into the deep sleep state as an Anandamaya. And there is a lot of discussion when 11th chapter comes, I will discuss this. And therefore, since the, I mean, the, um, this mind has resolved into the Agnana, of course, ignorance, but um, with, a, with a reflection or with a thought, let us say, which is thought of happiness or Sukhakarvati, it has um, gone into this, resolved into the deep sleep state. So that Vijnanamaya, which was there in a uh, waking state and Manomaya, of course, well, is called Anandamaya. That's beautifully described in um, verse 64 of uh, Panchadashi in 11th chapter. Supti purve kshane buddhi vrittihi ya sukha bimbita saiva tad bimba sahita lina nandamaya stataha and later also it is there antar mukhoya anandamaya brahma sukham tada bhungte chit bimba yukta bihi agnyan utpanna vrittihi that discussion we are going to get a chance so I am living right now. And that is what is exactly happening in a in a waking state also. Whenever you become happy, you are just with yourself. Mind does not basically project anything outside. Either you got a desired object, then mind has turned from extrovertedness to introvertedness. Mind is with itself and itself is none other than Brahman. Mind is non-separate from Brahman basically. Everything is by nature essentially is Brahman. And uh, well, so you, the, this Ahamvritti basically is just as though objectifies the self now. 
and so uh, you know so the aham vritti is as though takes a shape of the fullness that's what your experience is and therefore in a, in a, in a waking state also the abidance of mind we say in which there is no projection no extortedness or else you say i am with myself etc or you say the reflection of the self in the mind which is very now shanta no other uh, projection whatever you say shastra well achar different acharya says different way but ultimately here we are talking about uh, a deep sleep state in which the object of experience well we can say is is um, i mean i'm the experience is of a ananda so anyway so here in deep sleep state bhokta is a pragnya bhogyam is basically agnyanam or karana prapancha and bhoga is a ananda and of course it's a pratibhimba ananda because sometime when you come out of the deep sleep state you say well i enjoyed sleep today sometime even if you go to deep sleep state you come out you say but i did not get proper sleep today it seems so there also this is all pratibhimba ananda ananda maya means what maya stands for vikara and in that same thing in waking state and sometime you get a joy which is priya sometime you get a joy which is moda which you sometime you get a joy which is pramoda there also we that's what anandamaya is tas priyameva shirah modo dakshina paksha pramoda uttara paksha anandatma of course anandatma whatever ananda comes as a priya moda pramoda is ultimately myself only manifest in the mind that is there but basically um uh, here it says that uh, uh, this atma will basically is vilakshana tebhya vilakshana means atma is different from all these nine factors sthula bhokta and uh, we call vekar and uh, sthula bhogyam and sthula bhoga in jagrat avastha then taijasa it's it's a distinct atma is distinct from taijasa sukshma prapancha and uh, well and uh, sapna sukha dukha bhoga and uh, also distinct from basically pragnya and uh, bhogya prapancha that is agnyanam and bhoga that is ananda so basically tebhya vilakshana so this is what uh, verse 215 says here which is nothing but the taivalya upanishad mantra 121 or 118 either i am different from all these nine factors and this is beautifully discussed in mandukya nanta pragnyam na bahish pragnyam na ubayata pragnyam na pragnyana ganam all this indicating not a vishwa not a taijasa not a pragnya etc so tebhya vilakshana me sakshi i am different from them vishwa is a chidavasa one taijasa is a chidavasa number 2 pragnya is a chidavasa number 3 and sakshi is well present in all the three that's how turiya turiya means we consider fourth because it is vilakshana which is distinct from all the three therefore fourth but well basically present in all the three and uh, therefore chidabasa can't stand up uh, 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 other than chit we know that so these are my reflections basically in three mirrors that's it it's a basically states of a mind right when mind is fully awake and identify with the whole gross body also i mean sukshma sharira at that time that's a medium and then well i reflect into such a mind which is fully awake then i am vishwa and then part of the mind etc that's a medium reflect i mean mirror well then i am tejasa and when my mind resolves well basically i am a pragnya why i am pragnya why 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 do you say because it resolves into brahman why do you say it anandamaya is still jiva that's there but vijnanamaya only has resolved so therefore agnyanam etc is there i don't want to discuss actually it is, will be coming in 11th chapter so we'll discuss in upanishad it says well sata somya sada sampan tada sampanno bhavati you say you resolve in brahman and now you say anandamaya means that is jiva pragnya etc yeah but vijnanamaya on resolves into ignorance and therefore still that individuality is still there and so basically so you know they they give an example one acharya was giving an example that you have a a a, a um, you know that copper uh, pot and um, you want to you have gone, gone to rishikesh 
from Ahmedabad. Then you want to fill up with the Ganges water and carry for it to Ahmedabad to give people Ganga Jalam, etc. But uh, you bought a that pot along with that uh, lead. You know, sometimes that comes close with the lead, and then you dip into Ganges, <laughs> whatever time number of times. But still, definitely the water cannot enter into that. Same way, this Vijnanamaya, this Ahankara alone, this Vishwa alone, let us say, or Taijasa resolves into Agnana, but the Agnana Upadi is still there, and therefore the Jivatam continues. So we call it as Anandamaya. Anyway, so this is, uh, huh. and so, so there are these three are my reflections basically in three mirrors. So Chinmatraha Sakshi, Chinmatraha Sakshi. But Swamiji, you said um, in, in the, there's a mirror in a deep sleep state also? Yeah, that's a Karana Sharira. And therefore, there are three types of Vruttis also are there of a Karana Sharira. All this discussion is there. Anyway, so Chin Matraha Sakshi Sadashivaha, it's always Ananda Sarupaha. Pragna does not experience Ananda. It's a, I mean, as a Sarupa, fluctuating, it's always. Sometimes happy, happier, happiest. Even in deep sleep state also it happens. When you go come out, you feel really you enjoy sleep, and sometimes you say you did not enjoy, etc. So, Sakshi does not have a gradation. This they, uh, this Chidabhasa has a gradation. So that Sakshi Ananda Sadashiva, Sadashiva means which is basically Ananda Sarupa. That's how Shiva is always called Nataraja. That uh, posture itself indicates a. A, a dancing posture indicates a joy. Therefore, Shiva is a Nataraja. Means Sadashiva means always Sadashiva. See, Ananda always no the gradation. So, but here it is Sadashiva means Ananda Sarupa. And uh, and looking at this, so you, you can't experience original Ananda like this. You can never experience your original eyes. You perceive Pratibimba and uh, you claim, right? Your, you claim about your eyes. Same way you, you experience this kind of a Pratibimba Ananda and you experience the glory of, I mean, you claim the glory of yourself as Ananda Sarupa. That's what we have to understand. 216. Evam vive echite tatve vijnana maya shabditaha chidava so now Vidyarnya gives a grand vision of uh, this all this teaching. See, after studying all this, uh, we should have a total vision. Like you know the big painting, uh, and if you stay close to that, if you stand close to that, you see fingers and eyes and nose and of in the painting of the person. No doubt you have a clear vision. But you don't have a total appreciation. So later you, you go a little, you know, on, on, the, on the behind, and then you see the picture again, the total picture. You will get a total vision. So pa painting has a total dimension that you get go well when you be, go behind. So when you study with the teacher and uh, well study particular verse, etc., and you, well you see the total development, etc. But you see the entire picture when you go behind. So of chapter 6 and chapter 7 and all that. Well, it's, <laughs> so you get an entire perspective of the teaching. How Atma is ultimately Abhokta or Ananda Sarupa, etc., etc. You get a total vision of the Vedanta. So <clears throat> that is how they say in Shavanam and Mananam, basically teacher goes along with you. And therefore teacher is giving you a clarity. But in Niridhyasanam, well, teacher is no, <laughs> teacher cannot come in Niridhyasanam. And therefore, it is, Niridhyasanam is kept as an individual exercise where without even teacher and teaching, basically, you look, uh, I mean, teaching is there, but you have, you, you reflect upon the whole teaching uh, in a complete manner. Like, like you see the Avasthatraya Viveka in a Niridhyasanam very clearly. So either Swayam Jyoti Brahmana or Avasthatraya Viveka, etc., and uh, so you you revise whole thing you revise yourself right here right now we take one avastha and talk about it or take another avastha and then talk about it third avastha you talk about it for days together 
So that is uh, giving you clarity. But total vision is not there. Total, for total vision, you have to go back. Could you follow? So either you go in a Nididhyasanam without the help of a teacher, go back and get a total appreciation. And uh, that is how, well, it, it, this, is, this is to be understood. So it says here, evam tatve vivechite sati. So in word I, we have seen these two components are there. And teacher has communicated both that I associated with a particular state is Chidabhasa and I associated with all the three states is Chit and uh, in the mixture. And so experienced I is Chidabhasa, recognized I is basically is Chit. Experienced I in a, in a mirror, right? It's a reflection. But what is recognized is your eyes, right? That's what it is. People try to experience I means bringing out somewhere and keep it in Nididhyasana some, somewhere out and then experience it. What is this? What is this? Basically, we don't understand. This experience, Nididhyasana gives me an experience of um, Brahman. People say that. People, uh, it, it is ever experience. Every experience takes place because of this. Even your so-called foolish concept is possible because of this Chaitanya. Anyway, so basically, I is always self-revealing, self-experienced. Only thing is basically you drop the notions. Then, then nothing else to... Even Vedanta, words of Vedanta don't reveal Brahman. If words of Vedanta reveal Brahman, Brahman is not self-revealing. Words of Vedanta help you to drop the notion about I. If you drop it, you will you will own up what you are basically, because you have owned up something else in in absence of your uh, not knowing your real nature. Anyway, this is so experienced. I uh, is Chidavasa, definitely waker or dreamer or whatever. But basically, recognized I is this <coughs> is Chit Sakshi. So, um, next exercise is Yaha Chidabhasa. Well, Chidabhasa component of I. Tasya Bhoktrutvam Avashishyate. Chidabhasa component alone. Tasya. Tasya means Chidabhasa. Well, um, the Bhoktrutvam status, the Bhokta status, well, belongs to Eva. Chida, belongs to only Chidabhasa. Tasya Bhoktrutvam Avashishyate. Yaha Chidabhasa. Tasya Bhoktrutvam Avashishyate. The, uh, in I, the, whatever is this Chidavasa, of course, has a has a status of a Bhokta. Bhokta indicates abstract noun. So, enjoy or ness. So, means that status. Anyway, so Bhokta status is connected to the Chidavasa in the I, which is a mixture of both. Uh, Sakshi and Chidavasa. So, Prarabdha Bhoga belongs to Chidavasa. And after I exhaust my Prarabdha, I, I, I identify with the Chidabhasa. Yeh Chidabhasa tasse bhaktutum avashishyate. And which is what? Vijnanamaya shabditaha. Huh? Which is Vijnanamaya. In beginning of Swayam Jyotir Brahmana, if you, I, I told you when I, there, in, because uh, this 437, when which is under discussion, it begins with this, uh, that section begins, the Brahmana begins with the uh, word Vijnanamaya. So the word Vijnanamaya shabditaha. Well, in the beginning of this Swayam Jyotir Brahmana, whatever has been referred as a Vijnanamaya, that, that is called, that has a Bhokta status ultimately. <clears throat> so, but why do you say Chidabhasa is Bhokta, Chit is not Bhokta? You have not given enough reasoning. Well, there is a, if that is a question, well, Vidyarana says, I am giving you some logic that there is, the adjective to the Chidabhasa is a Vikari. It's a Hetu Garbha Visheshan actually. So, Hetu Garbha Visheshan means, well, Chidavasa being a subject to change, it is Bhokta. Hetu Garbha Visheshan means, if you define something for which the, you use a Visheshan, that Visheshan has that uh, Hetu. That works as a Hetu for the definition. And therefore, Chidavasa is subject to change. So, Bhokta is Bhokta when he undergoes change in form of a sukhi, dukhi, etc. That's a change. So go through ups and downs, etc. So bhokta is always savikara. That's our experience also. That's what our experience. Priya, moda, pramoda, in fact, even is sukha also. Priya, moda, pramoda. 
and therefore bhokta is a savikara chidabasa is savikar because it is but why it is savikar well because uh, chidabasa is always there in the medium associated with the reflecting medium reflecting medium is the mind Sub mind is subject to change and therefore chidabasa is subject to change so it is bhokta in a waking state it is fully awake full mind along with the identification with the body also and um, you can say even ahankara also well fully identified with the full self vishwa and then partially mind so a mind well, which is a medium is not fully awake most of the things are sleeping resolve then like that such a mind uh, well chidabasa is there so that's different and again and uh, well again mind resolves into into this agnanam etc and therefore basically the reflecting medium itself is undergoing change and therefore the chidabasa is going to have a vikara so to basically i mean therefore chidabasa being vikari it is bhokta so to enjoy that bhokta status change is prerequisite definitely right now you are enjoyer of a suppose a class then you are enjoying really of a you are having a, a suppose an ananda in your mind after some time you may will have a experience of a pain and you take yourself to be a dukhi etc so anyway it undergoes constant change so change is prerequisite for a bhokta to enjoy to experience rather and uh, this is one logic other logic is to be bhokta association with the object of experience also is required so well i can be a bhokta of ice cream etc when i um I, i associate myself with the ice cream so bhoktutvam status requires a bhogya sambandha also and chidabasa is a vyavarikam and uh, this bhogya prapancha also vyavarikam so vyavarika chidabasa and vyavarika bhogya prapancha can have a sambandha both belong to the same order of reality therefore chid, you know, chidabasa can become bhokta sakshi chit is asanga basically and so it cannot have a sambandha with bhogya prapancha well bhogya prapancha is a mithya atma is basically parmarthika satta has a parmarthika satta it cannot associate in fact there is nothing other than atma from that standpoint so there is a question of sambandha with bhogya prapancha etc and so definitely <clears throat> so uh, atma the chit sakshi cannot be called bhokta to be a bhokta ultimately it has to have a connection with the bhogya prapancha then only uh, well you will experience so that is how shitoshna sukha dukha daha so basically matra sparsha matra sparsha agama paina etc matra matra means sense organs sparsha means sense objects well the contact between them generates shitoshna and then sukha dukha daha so therefore contact is required to have a contact same reality should be there same reality should be chidabasa is a vyavarika because it is basically associated with the mind which is vyavarika therefore chidabasa can contact the the prapancha bhogya prapancha and can he be a bhokta sukha dukha bhokta etc and uh, whereas chit sakshi is basically has no connection asanga and therefore bhinna satta ka yo sambandha nasti the things of a different order of reality cannot have a relationship with one another that's how we used to say the the boy who is in a waking state cannot marry with a dream girl otherwise he will not say he is a brahmachari right <laughs> so definitely even though he marries in a dream when he wakes up he says he is a brahmachari then how can you say he is a brahmachari anyway this is just by the way so the smart sakshi bhokta na bhavati that's it the sakshi cannot be bhokta ya vikari chidavasa tasya bhoktrutvam tasya bhoktrutvam apekshate so that is what tasya shishyate tasya bhoktrutvam shishyate so out shishyate that remains with them out of mixture bhoktrutam goes to only uh, this chidavasa automatically sakshi is about so kimichan kasya kamaya shariram anusanjvaret so you should connect all these ideas with this bhridana kupanishad mantra 4412 with that kasya kamaya for whose sake well he undergoes all, all afflictions of the body etc but there is no enjoy at all <clears throat> so you are by nature sakshi abhokta as a ahankara you enjoy everything waking dream etc 
is your own status, your own reflection. <clears throat> Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om